Hi everyone! How are you guys doing? Not everything? <laughs> nope, 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 we're over that. <laughs> so, um... Which day is it today? Um, it's day 12. It's day 12. It's day 12. So how are you holding up? It's day 12 of the MCO when I'm... Um, actually losing myself and probably soon to lose my temper. Why is that? I cannot. I can't. <laughs> it's just like if being an introvert, like enjoying staying at home, but when you gotta stay, when you feel like your movement is so restricted, restricted it, it kind of drives you crazy, you know? So it's, it's different than uh, willing to stay at home and then being told to stay at home. So there are two different things, so uh, it's driving me crazy. It's only day 12. What about you? Well, it's a different case for me. Like, I love staying at home. Like, even though when people force me to stay at home, I mean, I actually enjoyed it. I'm probably like one of those people who, if I'm being told to stay in prison, I would what the happily be staying in prison. <laughs> Don't say that you don't want to say No, 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 no. But then, yeah, I really love staying at home. This is how it is. Like, I like staying at home. I get to eat properly here. And um, I get to sleep as much as I want, you know. Because when I was in, uh, when back in Labuan, in my college, I stay at my dorm most of the time, except when I'm going for classes. But then, I don't have much space on my own there, I guess, because I have a roommate and sometimes I don't eat well. So, being stuck in MCO at home with your family is like a dream come true for me. I suppose it's different for everybody. It's yeah. different for me because even though I'm stuck at home, I'm working from home and I'm still doing the eight hours uh, uh, job and I f it, it makes me feel kind of anxious. Like I have to stick to my time, but people people would say, "Hey, it's you know you it's it's flexible if you work from home." Maybe for some, but for me, no. If, because I think it's because of my time management. Mm -hmm. I want to use the eight hours uh, for working, even if I'm working from home. So it, it kind of make me anxious, and I don't like the idea that when I need to have discussion, I have to do it virtually. I'm not the kind of person who likes to do things online. I don't like doing online banking. I don't like... I just don't like to do things online. Despite being on social media. But I'm not that active on social media. So... I guess it, it depends. Like different generation. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we have um, four sets. Four sets of questions here. Alright. Um, to help us with this vlog because we've been like thinking what should we vlog about but we should vlog about what what is there to vlog about yeah. right so anyway so there are four questions here you're gonna choose the first one you're gonna ask me I'm gonna answer and I'm and we're gonna have a discussion on that. okay I took this one when did you first realize about the gravity of the virus about the danger of the virus um I only real I only realized it. Like when did it hit you hard? You know. A few days before the MCO. Before. Yeah. I mean, I I know that I I'm aware of the danger. I'm aware of the uh, risk. I'm aware of how it's been affecting the world, but. I suppose I was also in denial. I didn't want to overthink it. Mm. Like, you know, because people like to spread um, fake news, so I don't want to freak myself out. And like, at work, I have a colleague who's like, keep, who, who keeps on checking out the news and reminding me every hour. I just don't want to listen to it. And when I get home, the topic is still there. I feel like, when are we going to stop talking about this? So, about yes, now. I was. like I was drowning in, in, in that but because I was in denial. But a few days before the MCO, I was like, okay, shit is getting real. 
And but I was still calm. I was still a bit calm because mm -hmm. I don't want to overthink it. But um, uh, so when I got sent a link to track. Uh, to track how many cases, how many deaths, and what's been going on in the country itself, and especially in my hometown in Kuching, it it freaked me out. Like, what the? <laughs> yeah. What about you? When did you realize the gravity of the virus? Well, I I don't know. I don't realize it. I, I don't realize it. I just I've always been anxious. Like I have been anxious the whole time, even when I was sick. Like. I was sick before the MCO, right? Let me tell you this story. Right. I was sick a week before the MCO. During that time, I was already anxious. I was already um, isolating myself from everyone, even my roommate, because I didn't feel comfortable coughing around her and everything. Because I do know that bacteria around you when you cough, right? Like you're a carrier of, a, of bacteria or mold, might probably be carrying the virus. Yeah. So I was already anxious at the time, but I did not did not have the the heart to you know freak out like I, I don't want people to freak out around you, me so I, I just isolate myself you were also in denial I was also in denial <laughs> Somehow, yeah somewhat. I was also in denial and then my friends back in love one back in my university they were like it's Zora go for checkup go for checkup and I was like I was of course you know thinking twice about it and like I feel like I was being selfish at the time yeah. because yeah what if I spread um, my sickness definitely to other people? selfish <laughs> yeah so I was like okay fine so I went well, before the MCO I flew back I flew to Kuala Lumpur to meet my sisters because they said we need to go to the clinic so I was like okay fine so no, you came here on the first day of the yeah, MCO. Yeah, I came here on the first day of the MCO. After that, yeah. I didn't fly back anymore. So yeah, yeah, that was the time when I realized that it's dangerous because I could have, I could have like contracted the virus, you know. Yeah. And then seeing like the news, like everybody's telling me this that the death toll is rising, I was freaking out. Like I was so freaked out. And then, luckily, I'm better now. I'm not sick. I do not have the virus. I took her to the clinic <laughs> she took on the same the day. Yeah. And she yeah. came to the clinic on the same day. Like I, I just Before arrived. Before arrival. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, luckily I, I got better, and she took care of me really well. She gave me vitamin C. She got me all this medication, and I was like, you know what? I'm Gonna. If I don't do that, my parents will kill me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, it's a responsible thing. Well, yeah. it, if you're sick and you and you have this um, doubt, you have this fear, and you're anxious about it, it's selfish to not go for a checkup. Yeah. You should go for a checkup. You know. But speaking of which, even now, if you go to the supermarket. Uh, at the entrance, they will check your temperature, and I, I also think that's a good thing to do because then people are always okay. Let me check the temperature. Okay, they will not be paranoid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got so paranoid up to the point that I even sanitized my handphone. Okay, <laughs> and my driving license <laughs> and her driving license because she had to. Every we have a guard house here, so every time we go out, we have to give our license, right? So every time she receives her license from the guard, <laughs> she'll always. Sanitize me, man. Yeah. <laughs> sanitize. sanitize. Yeah. Okay, okay next, next question. question. Uh, no, let me choose. Okay. Oh, you take it and I'll take it from you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just 